on the call. And that's why we need to have a closer walk with God. 
In verse number 8, from that statement I want to use as a subject this morning, just a closer walk with thee. Just a close believe that we can have a closer walk with him. We can have a better walk. We can do I take you on home because we believe that we're here so that we can get better. We are here so we can have a closer walk with God. And all I mean, Satan is real. The devil is real. And he, he'll make you feel like you're winning the war, but you understand that him that's thinking he's standing, take he lest he fall. Don't you take God for granted. Don't you even take the devil for granted. So don't, if a man thinking he's standing, he need to take heed lest he fall. Our confidence should be in ourselves, but our confidence must be in God. The closer we get to God, he is a purifying of perfection. He's full of grace and he's full of mercy. He gives us all what we have. What we are told to wear a mask. We are told to have a, a social distance from other people. We keep our social distance and we try to stay at home. We still must have a closer walk with Jesus. I have to say it's a lesson about the COVID, this COVID-19 that we're, we're dealing with. This is a look at having a closer walk with Jesus, having a closer walk with God. I'm going to give you three points and then up. Uh, and I know that going against the COVID-19, they don't want you to, they want you to wear a mask so, so nobody else can breathe on you. I know they want to have six feet, the social distance uh, from other people, but if you're going to have a closer walk with doctors, they're, they're studying as I speak. They're working on a plan. They're trying to find a, a, a vaccine. They still walk with God. And even way back in March, when this event, when we heard about this COVID-19, get us closer to God, let him do it. I remember James said that in James chapter 1, and I think in verse number 2, even when we go through our problems and we're going through this COVID-19, I, I want us to have a closer if God takes his air away from you, we're going back to the grave from where we come from. We're going back to the dust. We are told to be used over your mouth and your nose. So if you're going to put your mask on, not only on your mouth, you got to go over your nose because you're trying to. But I want you to know that we need God to breathe on us. That's why we're trying to have a closer walk with God. Although we're dealing with this COVID-19, uh, we don't want anybody to breathe on us right now especially if they have the COVID-19. Don't come out, but I want you to know that I want God to breathe on me. I want God to, to walk with us and help us to be in Genesis chapter 2, in round number verse number 7, and God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and God breathed in man. I know we look at it as a physical, but that was a spiritual as well because man became what? They walk close to God and Expect God, we got to be close to him so he can breathe on us physically. The breath of life, we need God to, to breathe on us. When God removed his life-giving breath to sustain life, and we need to breathe to live. Since breathing is the most obvious sign of God made us live. And when God breathed in Adam, and the Bible says he became what? a living soul, and if we is a reason is recognized as a gift of God to his creatures. Not only that, the breath of God signifies the world, the word breath may be figuratively as when Jesus breathed the Holy Ghost upon his erectors from the grave. And Jesus was uh, uh, came back with his disciples and he met with them. And the Bible says that, that James is writing James wrote this letter because God's people were scared of the broad because they were afraid. They were in a room. They had a lock and they were afraid because they killed the Savior. They killed their leader, Jesus Christ, and they were afraid 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. I, I don't know about you, but I, I want God to breathe on me. And he's wait till the power comes. He was talking about God breathing on them with the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, we need the Holy Spirit. We, we, another person won't come from them 
and come to us. But 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 in John chapter nineteen, John chapter nine, we're fit, and the Bible said that Jesus spit on the ground and he made a spittle. He made something. He made some cake, clay of spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Oh, you know, people are trying to the Holy Spirit to direct us, to, to help us as we run this Christian race. The other day they said a group of young people, oh, see, if somebody can pass the germs on, they were trying to find out who can get it first. You know, we need to, to, to even like this so that God can breathe on us. So God can give us the Holy Ghost and give us the spirit to, to date chapter 5 in verse number 32. Uh, and, and so is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey. How can God breathe on you? How can God give you the gift of the Holy Ghost? Well, Peter told them, repent and be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Let God breathe on you. A close, just a close up, walk with thee. Not only God has them to they're saying you need to stay home as much as possible. They're telling you to stay six feet apart from other people with Jesus. God's going to need to touch you. <laughs> you got to get so close that, that he can touch you. And, and God want to touch parents. He want to make you better children. He want to make you a better person. That's why he want to he wanna touch you. you we don't want to touch you in the body. But I tell you this, we got to let God touch us. We're going to help us. Closer walk with thee. We're gonna let. They're gonna have to touch you. They're gonna have to feel you to find out what's going on. And I'm so glad that Jesus is that great physician. He got to be around you. He must touch you. And I remember, you know, when Jesus would go from city to city, helping in round verse number 24. And Jesus went. This, this is when Jairus told Jesus, and I, I got a daughter, and they thronged him, meaning that. They were close to him. They were crowding him. They were even touching him. And touch the hem of his garment. Uh, I can be healed. Sometimes you got to be touched by Jesus. And this Jesus was around all that crowd. And this one to touch him. Jesus said, somebody touch me. Who touched me? And, and you. Have you ever been on a bus that was crowded? Have you ever been on a train that was crowded? Have you ever been in the place all right? So if you're going to have a close-up walk with Jesus, he need to touch you. In Mark chapter 5, in verse on the road to, to Jerry's house, that one who was in his blood caught up with him. But finally he got there with the young lady, but she was all new. He touched the, young, the little girl by the hand, and he put his hand on her hand. And sometimes we got to let him you don't know what you're going to do and how you're going to make it. Put your hand in Jesus' hand. Get unchained. We just got to touch his hand and get close to Jesus as possible. And Jesus was worshiping or, or, or wash his disciples' feet. If you're going to wash, y'all don't hear me. If you're going to wash somebody's feet, you got to. And began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel. Wherewith he had girded them. Then come old Simon, why would Jesus allow him to preach? But Peter had some issues in life, but Peter was dedicated. But Peter said, Lord, you're not going to wash. Say to him, if I wash thee not, thou shalt have no part of me. Then in verse number 9, Simon Peter, you're going to be what God wants you to be. If you're going to have that closer walk with Jesus, you need to let Jesus touch you. Walk with Jesus, you got to let Jesus touch you. You remember when Peter... Oh, come on, Peter again. Oh, Peter was walking on the water, on the water. But when he saw the boisterous wind, you know, when he saw the waves coming. And let me tell you, in his life, but I'm so glad that Jesus was there to help us when we fall. And Peter took his eyes off Jesus and pulled old Peter out of the water. So I'm so glad he touched him. So if you're afraid and you're going through some troubles in life, man. You say, how can I put my hand in Jesus' hand? You put your hands in Jesus' hand by trusting in him. Put the one in verse number one, and the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word walked with Jesus. Get close to the word. Follow his word. When Jesus said, I am the way, 
the truth in a way. Follow him. Obey the truth. And look for the everlasting life that God can help you to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Somebody getting close, y'all. As you draw nigh to God, the COVID-19, we wash our hands so many times. We put sanitizer on our hands, but if we don't let you double-minded, God want to touch you. He want to make your life brand new. How can I let chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? But then he says that we got to keep up. And when Jesus was teaching in John chapter 6 and verse 56, he that eateth my flesh and, and, and drink my blood. And the Bible says that that was a hard thing. And many of the disciples walk, we don't know what's going on. We don't even know if we have it or not because we haven't been tested, but we got to let God touch it. And when God says, do this in remembrance of me, and we do this every uh, first day of the week, we have the bread, which is his body, did for us on the cross, and we touching him because we're coming in contact with him. Having a closer walk with Jesus. And then thirdly, he want to heal us. And right now, oh, the government is paying millions of doctors, people who got been to college and all different learnings trying to come together. But they, they, they're spending all this time and money, but the best healing that we can have is a spiritual healing. Why? We don't have to worry about everything else. All of the devil, even when James wrote this book, this letter, it, uh, uh, catch them and haul them to jail, to prison. They, they were afraid, but but still, we got to understand that, that God should, back in Jeremiah 8, in verse 22, he says, Is there no but the health of my daughter, of my people, recovered? Is there some medication? Is there, there is a great physician by the name of Jesus Christ. His medication is his blood when he died on the race of the rest. There are some things that we can take care of by obeying God and let God take care of those other problems. You know, Jesus wants to heal you. But the only way he can heal you, you got to get close to him. <laughs> a doctor in this healing, it. but I'm telling you, Jesus is our medicine. Why don't you 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 try him? In most of the California, oh Jesus can be there. Oh, they're having a problem in Texas and Jesus can be there. They're having a problem in, at the same time. There's some good healing process, y'all. In Matthew eight, Matthew eleven, twenty eight. That's why if you read, I want to give you some medicine. You remember those ten men with the leprosy? They went to Jesus and Luke chapter 17, you're going to die with leprosy. There was no cure for leprosy, but they went to Jesus. And even right now, the COVID, he will work. And they lifted their voice and they said unto Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I'm going to say, I can't help you. I got to send you to a specialist. And another doctor may say, we have done all that we can, but I want you to that name. Paul said, I am the chief of them. If Jesus can heal Paul, oh, he can heal you. <laughs> he can heal anyone back to Mark chapter 5 where Jerry is. In Mark 5 and verse 22 and 23, oh, Jerry is. And while Jesus was on his way to Jerry's daughter, to Jerry's house to heal his thumb of his garment, I know I can be healed. She had this issue of blood, not for one year, not for of his garment, I shall be made whole. The boy that was born blind. You remember that boy in John chapter 9? He put the medicine on the boy's eye. But then he told the little boy to go wash in the pool. And if you take medicine, if your doctor gives you medicine and you got to take your pill, guess what you're going to take with your pill? When you take antibiotics, you got to drink plenty of water so it can, it can go through your system. And the same thing with this to say about this. In First Peter chapter 3 and verse number 20, which sometimes were disobedient, for in few, there is eight souls 
was saved by water. Water was important back then in First John chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. Who is he that overcometh the world? But in blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water in blood. And even we will be coming, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Spiritual healing. Right now, with this COVID-19, we're trying to get a, a physical healing. No matter, even though you take some medicine and you feel good, you say, I feel like a new man. But can we, on the physical, although they're trying to get back seen, guess what? Another problem is going to come. Some night, some might not want to heal us forever that you can have ever left in life. The best thing. And I challenge each member, I challenge you if you're going to call that, that you have a closer walk with Jesus, that you let Jesus breathe on you if you don't come to him. <laughs> and then he got to touch you. He got to put his hands on you. He come out walking a new of life and you have been healed. Don't you want to be healed? And I, I know our president, I know our government said, guarantee he won't let you down. You ain't got to practice it, just do it. You don't have to worry about does it work. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning and you're not a child of God, if you are distance away from God, Jesus they come on you ask that question. You come to Jesus by hearing the good news. The good news, which is the gospel, is that Jesus died trying to find out have they found a vaccine yet? Some say they're gonna find it before the end of the year, some say it'll be next year, some say it'll be good. Jesus is available today. When you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You come out hearing, now that is repentance, that you want to live a different life. You got to make up your own mind. Mama can't make it up for you. Daddy can't make it with our mouth that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And being baptized in the water, baptism for the reveal you, make your life brand new. If you're here this morning, and, and you're not a child of God, you're not a member of the church, and you can be home. If you find yourself going the wrong way, you need to come back home. If you find yourself doing things that the devil wants you to do, false one to another. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous of that much. And we'll pray for you, that you or for someone else. You can make it known right now. 